I don't want to share someone else's thoughts. I want to create my own original thoughts. I want to create my own original solutions. I want to look at situations and come up with my own phrasing, my own words, and do it my way. This is the John Taffer Podcast. Shut it down. Well, hello. I am John Taffer. This is the John Taffer Podcast, and welcome. Happy New Year. So, first I want to start by thanking everybody for the amazing support we had last year, Corey, as our podcast just grew and grew and grew, and it's all because of you guys. So, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And, you know, not the most exciting New Year's Eve I've ever had. No, what'd you do? Stayed home. Oh. I think I was probably asleep at 11. What? I didn't watch the ball drop. I got to tell you, though, I watched the fireworks in Sydney, Australia, which were really kick-ass. I mean, oh, really? I don't know if you saw them. They were incredible. You can probably see them on YouTube. But it's amazing the fireworks that they shot off with nobody there to watch them. <laughs> That's I true. Guess it was all for TV, I yeah. guess. But, you know, it is a new year. And there is a lot to be rejoiceful about. We do have a vaccine. 20 million people were supposed to be vaccinated by the end of December. You know how many actually got vaccinated? No, I'm curious. Two million. Really? So we achieved our 10% of what our goal was. Gotcha. And at that rate, it will take us years and years and years. Imagine at 2 million people a month, how long it's going to take to vaccinate over 300 million people. <sighs> now, I don't believe it's going to stay at 2 million a month, but I don't see it going from 2 million to 20 million either. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about the distribution yeah. of the vaccine. And I'll tell you what else really pisses me off. And I won't say who, and I'm glad because they're a friend. I got a phone call from a friend of mine this morning whose two brothers that are 21 years old, uh, two in their young 20s, one is 21, the other is 23, are being vaccinated tomorrow. They have no pre-existing conditions. They're in their young 20s. And I don't understand how that's happening. Not that I don't want them to be vaccinated and be healthy and happy. Of course I do. But I understood that there was supposed to be some systems in place so that those who proposed the greatest risk to their health would be vaccinated first. And in no way, shape, or form is that a 20-year-old kid who has no previous existing conditions. I also read a great article, blew me away, about two hospitals in Los Angeles that have gotten busted for vaccinating family members. Uh -oh. So now it begins. <laughs> yeah. Right? So are people going to pay off to get the vaccine? Yeah. Are they going to only take care of their own families? What happens to this system that was supposedly put together to create a fair and equitable distribution of the vaccine based upon needs? Well, that seemed reasonable to me, Corey. I'm willing to wait my turn. Right. But I shouldn't have to wait longer than my turn based upon whatever conditions I or do, do or do not have, nor should you. Mm -hmm. And if you are asthmatic, you should get that vaccine before somebody who's not. Absolutely, yeah. So it's falling apart. <clears throat> and I'm very concerned about it, to tell you the truth, Corey. I'm concerned about the quantitative numbers. I'm concerned about the way this is being prioritized. I'm concerned that every state is doing it differently. And what we've seen during this pandemic is we've seen a lot of states fuck this up. <laughs> and we've seen one state do one thing and another state do another that is right next door to each other. So if there's one thing that's come out of this, it's confusion. No state does the same thing. No governor says the same thing. The CDC says different things all the time. Dr. Fauci has said different things all the time. So the one thing that's clear is that this has been a very confusing and unsustained process. I was hoping the vaccine, which is all logistics, would have been a lot smoother. And I, I am hugely disappointed. I hear about warp speed, warp speed, warp speed, warp speed. That's not warp speed. 10% of projection Two million instead of 20 million is not warp speed. So I'm very concerned about the vaccine. And we all have to figure out a way to go back to work. We all have to figure out a way to move our lives forward. We can't sit and wait for the government all the time, Corey, because they let us down too much. And those of you who were waiting for that big stimulus check, it didn't happen, did it? And when the stimulus should have happened back in September, it didn't happen because of politics. And then when they said a $2,000 check over a $600 check, that didn't happen. Why? Because of politics. So if you're sitting here thinking that our government is going to come through for us, I think that you're wrong. I think that the government can help us, but we have to come through for ourselves. And this is the year, I believe, of self-reliance. Corey, there's going to be great opportunity out there this year. I believe that. Once Absolutely. the vaccine yeah. happens, restaurants, production, content, all of these things are going to explode. Home construction, remodeling, et cetera, et cetera. All these things are going to explode. And 
when that explosion happens, it's up to you to pursue the opportunities that arise, not the government. So I'm focused on moving us along. I'm focused on resolutions. So this New Year's, I got a couple of resolutions. Do you? I had an idea, Corey. I thought we should focus the first four episodes of this podcast on New Year's resolutions and empowering people to be successful. So I want to bring some great guests on in the next few weeks. I want to address the excuses that are in my book, Don't BS Yourself, and I want to set us all up for a great 21. So you want to ride with me? Let's do this. I'm going to kick your butt a little bit. I want to hear your fears. I want to hear your comments as we go down this road. I'm going to bring some great guests on. Let's dissect the things that are holding us back. Let's blow out the excuses. And let's talk about what New Year's resolutions can really be. So I wanted to do something really special for this year, for starting out the show. And, you know, I wrote my book, No Excuses. We've talked about that. I've done seminars all over the world on my No Excuses program. And, and we've done educational programs. And we do V-note speeches. We did one this morning for the largest exterminating company in America. I did a keynote speech this morning from our studios here. We do this stuff all the time. And we work with these companies. And it's interesting. The company who I gave a V-note speech to today, out of 20,000 companies in the country, Corey, that do what they do, and it happened to be an exterminating, an environmental company. Right. They ranked 45. Oh, wow. Out of 20,000. Jeez. Top of their game. Yeah. Everything is new for them. The way they take their trucks, the way they heal with their people, the chemicals, everything is new to them. You know, I was on a loading dock of a casino a few weeks ago. And uh, some new slot machines are being delivered. And the new slot machines, by the way, they don't have handles. They have foot pedals. Ah, okay. So you play with your feet, so right. it's a little more sanitary. Mm -hmm. And the wooden crate lands on the loading dock. And on the side of the wooden crate are stickers that say COVID safe sanitized. Oh, gotcha. They open the crate. And the, the unit is in a big plastic bag inside the wooden crate. On the plastic bag are stickers that say sanitary, sanitized COVID safe. Then you take the bag off, the, 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 and then on the side of the machine is a sticker that says sanitized COVID safe. And then a sanitized COVID safe guy is going to come to the loading dock and pick that up. Wow. And he's going to put it on a, a, a COVID safe hand truck. And he's going to take it through a COVID safe room. And he's going to lay it in a COVID safe place. And then the maintenance department is going to service this machine and keep it clean and operating COVID safe. And now COVID safe is freaking everything do you think that that's practical well you know in the food service business we've seen this stuff for a lot of years actually Corey. and i remember when i went on laura ingram's show at fox and i beat her up a couple of times and i'm going to do it again and i said on laura ingram's show and you remember this Corey? Mm -hmm. you, you yeah. watched it i told her that months from now in kitchens people are going to be wearing masks they're going to be wearing gloves and kitchens are going to look a little more like operating rooms than kitchens and she said to me, oh, that's ridiculous. That will never happen. Right. It did happen. You know, in the food service business, everything has a seal on it. It's mm -hmm. either FDA approved or even stainless steel refrigeration systems have commercial food service seals on them. Yeah. Chemicals that you buy from companies like Echo Lab or Procter Gamble, they all have food service tags on them. So the restaurant industry has done this forever. Right. Everything that we buy pretty much has some kind of a tag on it. For example, if you go to a store and buy a plastic Tupperware type of container, a restaurant can't use that. That's not food service rated. Right. The ones that we buy are a different kind of material, a different durability. They don't, they don't pierce as much. They're not as absorbent. Uh, 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 uh. So this food service product of that same size clip-on container mm -hmm. has a seal on it. Yeah. That qualifies it. So I think yes. And I think this just is the way of the world right now. And we're going to see safety seals. Look at look at cigarettes have safety seals on them. Yeah. Drugs all have safety seals True. on them. So now this is an industry where for a while there's going to have to be some sanitation COVID. And I don't believe that a year from now it's going to say COVID safe. Right. And I'm not sure the tags are going to be there. But I think the practices will, Corey. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I was talking about this this morning in my keynote speech. Let's say it's six months from now and we're all vaccinated and movie theaters are opening again and restaurants are up again and 
comedy venues and concerts and all this stuff is up. And you go to a movie tonight with your girlfriend and you sit down in a theater and you're vaccinated and this is all sort of behind us now and the person behind you sneezes. That sneeze <laughs> is very different than it was a year ago. Yeah. You with me? Oh, yeah. If somebody sneezed a year ago, ah, shit, I don't want to catch a cold. You know, you might right. have, today, I'm out of there. I'm not even in the same freaking room with them. So a cough is very different today than it was a year ago. Yeah. A sneeze is very different today than it was a year ago. Somebody pulls out a tissue with a running nose. It's very different today in perception than a year ago. Yeah. So I think that these things stay. And I think that the a certain decorum of safe and sanitary procedures is gonna is gonna live on. And I'm not sure that COVID safety seal is gonna be there, but sanitation is gonna be part of the processes of these companies, I believe, now forever. Yeah. And you know, Corey, the winter is gonna end pretty soon. Next fall, we have the next flu, don't we? <laughs> yeah. And then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. So so if we're all conscious of germs and we're all conscious of, of some type of separation because we don't want to get each other, nor do we want to get sick, then these things live on. And they just relate to the next illness, to the next cold season, the next flu season. So, you know, I think that when we look at what is the fallout of this year, that's it. Safety, security, sanitation, and a mental awareness that's very, very different in the way we all deal with those things. So when I look at my New Year's resolutions, I thought long and hard. My New Year's resolution is we're starting Bar Rescue in just a few weeks. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, um, I'm pretty excited that I will cross, and I'm pretty excited to tell this, I don't know if anybody knows this, we will cross 200 episodes this season. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've done 196. We have four more to go. And 200 episodes of television is a big freaking <laughs> deal. I mean, it puts us in a history books. Right, yeah. Particularly in transitional reality TV. So I'm very excited. So that's going to happen this season. So I've made a resolution to myself, and I, I guess I've done this every year. I want to make the best season of Bar Rescue ever. So I'm working really, really one, hard yeah. on technologies and all of that. I want to I want to really put forth ideas and solutions and, and reputations and impacts for our business that can move forward. So that's a big deal for me. I also want to lose a little weight. I'm also going to be much better on my personal self this year, Corey. I work my ass off all the time. You know that. Mm -hmm. I don't take many trips. I don't take many travels, et cetera. So yeah. I went out a couple of weeks ago. You saw what I bought. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> I bought myself a, a Class B. No, I have a 42-foot bus that I used when I travel across the country. And um, it's got a bedroom in it and a bath and a half and a little fireplace. And I can live in it. And when we opened Taffer's Tavern in Georgia, Nicole and I and the dogs, we all drove out there and, and we lived in a bus for five weeks when we opened Taffer's Tavern in Alpharetta because I didn't want to stay in hotels because of COVID. And that's, right, yeah. so I, you know. Yeah, that my, makes sense. So we brought our own food, we brought everything and, and, and we stayed out there in a the bus. But you know, that bus is so big, you can't take it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I got to go to Los Angeles and I got to go to all these places. And to me, you know, during COVID, the biggest fear is sort of a public bathroom these days and stuff. So I said, I'm going to buy myself a vehicle with a bathroom in it. <laughs> so I bought an Airstream Interstate. It's a 19 foot van tall. You can stand in it. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's got a full bathroom and shower in it, a full size bed, a little kitchen refrigerator and stuff. And, and it's a Mercedes Sprinter. And it's freaking cool as hell. So I can drive for couples, pull over, use my own bathroom, and then keep driving. So I call it quarantined travel. John, do you name do you name your vehicles? You got a bunch of them now. So I was no, curious. Not really. I never no. did. Never named the airplane either. Yeah. Everybody else says, "What'd you name it? What'd you name it?" I really never <laughs> yeah. named it anything. Huh. But it, it's it's. A, nor have I named my cars actually over the. Yeah, years. I was just curious. Do you? Uh, I, I did have this old truck. My first truck called it Ranger Buck. Ranger it was a Buck. Ford Ranger. <laughs> it was a shitty old truck. But. So when it didn't start, would you say, come on, Buck? Come yeah, on, come yeah. on, Buck. Let's go. Back. Yeah. I think, yeah, you talk to, you need a name when, when the truck doesn't work right. I guess you, but when it works, I guess you don't need the name as much when it works well. So this year's one of my resolutions. I'm going to get out there a little more, Corey. You know, and, and it's hard for people to understand the impact of celebrity on one's life. You know, I lived my whole life not being a celebrity, and this happened to me very late in life, and being a celebrity is a double-edged sword. It's, it's freaking wonderful, Corey. Don't get me wrong. I'm treated really well in places, you know, in restaurants and everywhere I go, and I'm recognized. And it's, it's an amazing blessing that I'm incredibly appreciative of. Uh, 
The bad side of being a celebrity is I can't pick my nose in public anymore, can I? <laughs> yeah. Those days are over. Yeah, so, probably not. So, you know, you're, you're constantly being watched every place you go. And, and so airports and things like that can sort of be a bummer sometimes. So locking myself in that little Airstream with my bathroom and my refrigerator and everything and just going across. I'm going to do a lot of driving cross country this year. I want to meet a lot of people. I want to see a lot of people. I've been isolated too much this year. We all have. Yeah. And, you know, people say, I can't wait to get to a restaurant. I can't wait. Sure, I can't wait either. I can't wait to get out and be around people again. I want to be in a room with 50 people again. And I want to sit in my conference room with all our employees again. Yeah, just that. Yeah. Just that. So, to me, the greatest opportunity for this year is what am I going to do with all the opportunities I have to interact with people? And I wonder what you're going to do. So for the next few weeks, I wanted to do something really special. I'm reaching out to a bunch of friends of mine who are real experts. People like Dr. Phil and many other friends that I have, Damon John, friends like that. And I want to focus on what are you going to do this year to make your life better? So I want to have one discussion on business. Who has to make career changes? What do we have to do? I want to have another discussion on attitude. I want to have another discussion on psyche. I want to have another discussion. I want the next three to four weeks to be focused on preparing us all for this new year. And we need some preparation for sure for this. So here's what I want to do. I want you to ask yourself if this year is a year of opportunity when COVID starts to end, businesses are going to come back, restaurants, if, if this is a year where we're going to start to see opportunity and growth again, What's holding you back? When I think of the excuses in my book, the number one excuse that people have, Corey, is fear. I'm scared to try. I'm scared to take the risk. I'm scared to make the commitment. I'm scared to walk away and move to something else. How many of us are in something safe that we know we could do better, but we're scared to walk away from what's safe at the risk of growing ourselves. And what you'll say to yourself is, I'm scared to make the change. I'm stable now. I have a decent job. You know, it's decent, it's decent, it's decent, it's decent. Well, when you're laying in your deathbed, Corey, do you want to look back at your life and say it was decent? No. I'm guessing you'd like to use another adjective e instead of yeah. decent. I certainly would. Yeah. So do you want a decent job? No. Do you want decent opportunity? Decent no, pay? Not at all. So how many of us are scared to move on to something because there's risk involved? And how many of us are going to accept that because we're scared? I want to address fear head on next week. And I'd love you all to send me emails about the fears that you have. I'm going to read them online. We might even call you. I want to know what are you scared of? Are you scared of change? Are you scared because you might not have the knowledge you need to succeed? Are you scared that you're going to throw away a security blanket that's been somewhat dependable for you? Are you scared that you'll let somebody down? Are you scared of failure? Are you scared of success? What are your fears? I want to take it head on next week. And I'm straight, guys. Send me emails. I want to hear it. What are you scared of as we enter 21? Sure, COVID. I get it. We're scared of COVID. That one I give you but I don't give you anything else. Sorry. What are your fears? Let's talk about them next week. Then the following week, I want to focus on knowledge. How many of us say we don't have the knowledge to succeed? Here's a great one, Corey. I've interviewed people for jobs who tell me they have too much knowledge. Jobs beneath them, man. I have too much knowledge for this. <laughs> so knowledge works both ways. Yeah. You know, scarcity I love that. Scarcity. Well, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of space. I don't have a lot of resources. Tell that to Stephen Jobs when he was working in his garage. Or Bill Gates when he was working in his garage. I want to address these excuses head on. And next week, it starts with fear. What are you scared of in 21? Think about it. I know you have them. I certainly have some that I'm scared of. And I'm going to address them head on too. That's what I want to talk about next week. So send me those emails, give us some calls, and I'd love to hear from you. Let's kick fear in the balls next week. And I want to hear from you to do so. So where are we going? Oh, we got that big election tonight, right? In Georgia, we got the big Senate election. It's going to determine control of the government. So we got that going on tonight. So next week, we're either going to have a mixed government or we're going to have a Democratic government. And it's interesting when you think about which is better. Is mixed better? 
or is one party control better? You know, one party control has always scared me because there's no cross check, Corey. You know, it's like me giving you a wallet and and, and credit cards with no limit on them. Right. And, and you know, when there's cross party control, then somebody's watching that checkbook. Somebody's cross checking each other. There is a certain balance. So I would be remiss if I didn't say that I'm in favor of some balance in government. I'm not being uh, uh, one way or another of course, politically yeah. in that statement. I also know that the stock market prefers to see balance. And we look over years in a stock market. The stock market performs best when the Senate is Republican and mm-hmm. the House and the presidency is Democrat. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting, yeah. And, and it's interesting. If, if it's the other way around, the stock market doesn't quite perform as well. And I'm not sure there's a logic to that, and I'm not sure it yeah. favors one party over another. But Democrat in the White House and in the House and Republican control of Senate tends to, to motivate the stock market to perform better. Yeah. So, you know, this is all about our economy now these next few months. we got to get people back to work. we got to get money in people's sa- savings accounts again, and we got to start to move out of this. And I don't want us to be scared when we do it. The actions that you take in the next three to four, five or six weeks are going to determine so much for the rest of your lives. Think about that, Corey. If your job was gone, and yours, of course, isn't, you're locked in, buddy. But if your job was suddenly gone and you said, you know what, I'm going to join the electrician's union and become an electrician. And years from now, you own an electrical company, an electric contractor. You got a big house, you're making a fortune. That little decision changed your entire life. Yeah. That one little decision. And that person who says, you know, I'm tired of working for somebody else. I got a few dollars. I'm going to start a home-based business. And then years later, it, it's a, 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 some unbelievable sock company or, or my pillow. Right, yeah. Which oh, Mike yeah. Lindell started in his garage mm-hmm. with just an idea. He said, I'm going to make a pillow. Simple idea small idea changed his life millions of people sleep on those pillows every night like them or not it's a heck of a story so the decisions that you make during this shift are going to change your entire life the the trajectory of your life these are important decisions you're going to make these next few weeks as our economy comes back career shift priorities shift and objective shift i want to make sure that we make the right ones together That's what these next few episodes are all about. So don't forget, send me notes, send me emails. You can reach me at podcast at johntaffer.com, podcast at johntaffer.com. Send me an email with your fears and your concerns for the year and tell us your fears and your concerns for this year. And next week, we'll pick them apart. And I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye. If you like watching the John Taffer podcast, click here to subscribe for more or click here to watch the next one.